哈喽，赛车 Randy 的观众朋友，大家好！我们今天呢，很高兴邀请到这个 Darwinia 的 GMO Bree， 还有 Co-founder Alex 来跟我们一起聊一下，呃， Darwinia 以及 p o k a d a 的生态，然后以及他们最近的在做的一些事情，然后以及 Darwinia 后面的一些规划。Uh, okay, hello, Alex. So the first question for Alex is: We know there's a dual token design in the Darwinia ecosystem. So why we need dual token? Because in classic、uh, proof of stake system, there's an important metric called the、uh, coin age. That judges how long a user is holding the coin, and use that to determine the power the user's、uh, voting is. But in our system, we think commitment is more important, which is means a user how long he promises to hold the coin. Their interest is long term and、uh, aligned with、uh, the project's success.、Yeah. That's why we decided that、uh, we use this dual model uh, uh, tokenomics, uh, Ring as the native token, and、uh, Keton as the commitment token. Yeah, as that's its official name. And the user can voluntarily、uh, decide to lock a certain amount of ring for a certain amount of period. In return, he can get Python as reward. So that's a certificate for his promise. And because commitment has value, and that's why we allow it to trade. That makes it a very interesting theory that the commitment has a price. And anyone who purchases the Python token, he pays the price so that he inherits the power the Python is. In the staking design, the pool is split into two equal ascending weights for ring staking and Python staking. So that in this design, that's very interesting because initially Python's supply is zero. Only when user starts to lock their ring, that then they can mint Python so that the supply raises. So early age, because the supply of Python is limited. So when you have some Python, your percentage. Is high,、mm -hmm. so that the staking power you have from this、uh, staking pool is relatively high. So the yield is high, which means more people will be encouraged to lock their ring for Keton, so that they can have more staking power, which is、uh, it can be treated as influence in the system, so that they can use that to do a、uh, later in the governance、uh, process. And、uh, also because Keton is kind of soft,、uh, circulating supply from the ring. So that it's beneficial for all the ecosystem. It can remove the inflation effect. Okay, so we can just call Kaitana commitment tokens. Yeah, the utility is the commitment. Yeah. So as I know, the Darwinia is start from a blockchain made for games, something like that. But I think、uh, now we are just focusing on the cross chain,、mm -hmm. cross, 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 cross to every every chain. I think. So why is the change? Oh, actually, there's、uh, no、uh, strategic vision change, which is to help build a decentralized web. And we are just at a different phase in the journey to reach our goal. We have、uh, Evolution Land, which is a cross-chain、uh, blockchain game.、Mm -hmm. uh, that's the first step because we think blockchain needs to go to the general public. But blockchain itself is a complicated, it's hard to understand concept. But game is a very easy, relatively easier concept for yeah, yeah, users. Yeah. So a game, a good design game, is Easy to to encourage users to to try blockchain ecosystem. So we design this evolution lab as a showcase of blockchain's economic capability, especially、uh -huh. of cross-chain stuff like that. So we first iteration two years ago we started the evolution lab and we have、uh, different continents、uh, deployed on Tron and the Ethereum. And at that time, players can purchase lands, continents. They can mine resources and、uh, they can do inter-chain trading. And、uh, we design it to be able to cross chain. So those、uh, continents on different blockchains are kind of they have、uh, collaboration together, but、mm -hmm. also they are competing. By that time, the bridge between these two chains, proof of authority bridge, it's something that's workable but not good enough. But we don't know how to make it truly decentralized、uh, bridge. But now after the first iteration of game is finished, we move to the next phase, which is the infrastructure for the cross chain、uh, bridge. And that's why Darwinia is born. And we have a solution that allow、uh, cross-chain message token value transfer in a truly decentralized manner, which is beyond our expectation. And I think it's、uh, not only benefit packaging like、uh, Evolution Land,、uh -huh. it can also benefit other、um, blockchain applications, not limited to、uh, gaming, but also to DeFi, to other industries. This is why at this stage we are promoting Darwinia to allow. Other developers, other applications, they can use it to upgrade their single chain application into a cross chain application. 
And also, we are working very closely to uh, with Google the ecosystem mm -hmm. because they have a very cool protocol design called uh, cross chain message passing yeah. within the Polka dot ecosystem. And Darwinia is aimed to be a parent chain and bring the heterogeneous cross chain capability to the Polka dot ecosystem so that the parent chains they don't have to build their individual bridges to outside chains. They can use Darwinia service to get to any other fully completed uh, blockchain destination. And so, Evolution Land, uh, we are releasing a new UI interface very soon. And also the third continent will be deployed on the Darwinian network. So that the bridge is uh, getting ready and uh, games will be upgraded as well. So that's a very important showcase just I mentioned for our applications. We especially focus on NFT market because we believe it's it's huge. And uh, many people think NFTs are uh, their they are game props. Game props are NFT but it's not limited to that area. Other supply chains, uh, invoice drafts, stuff like that, they are NFT as well. So at the moment, there's no good solution for NFT to cost chain because most of the solutions out there is a custodian model based, multi sig uh, wallet. You won't be able to imagine that uh, if I want to transfer a crypto kitty to another chain, and uh, so many custodians they have to send transactions, those micro high frequent NFT uh, transfer will not be friendly under that model. So we think uh, Darwinia will, will benefit in the NFT market especially. So this is all the research work we uh, to reach our ultimate goal. Along the way, we also developed the iterating ID, which is the airgapped uh, signing app on your mobile phone, so that you don't have to keep a private key in the browser. You can just uh, scan the QR code in the game and uh, sign it in your mobile phone. And also, we use the uh, state channel in our game for dividends. And uh, we developed a subscan, which is a substrate-based blockchain uh, explorer to benefit all the blockchains developed by uh, Substrate. So we did uh, quite a lot of tools to help us uh, reach the goal. We think the, the mountain is high, but we climb the step every day. Uh -huh. Okay, so the so next question is how you choose the validator from all the staking uh -huh. users? Anyone can be a validator. Validator is the role in the system that uh, kind of a professional who runs a, a node that helps to validate the blocks information in the system. And uh, if you have staking power mm -hmm. from a ring or Keton staking, right? You can vote for yourself. Or if you are not professional, you can work as a nominator to vote for someone who's capable to do the job well. This mechanism is called a NPOS, nominated proof of staking. If you're just an average uh, user, you have a uh, ring or Keton. Yeah. You stake in the system, you have power, you have influence in the system. Yeah. You vote for quality validators. And if they do their work well, they, are, they have a uh, staking reward from the validating and that those rewards will be shared with nominators. So you are backing those professionals to do their job well. But if their job performance is not good enough, sometimes they, they often go offline or they do bad stuff, they will be slashed, they will be punished, mm -hmm. and the nominator will be punished as well. Okay. So a user, a nominator, you can choose wisely. And based on the validity performance, mm -hmm. you can judge who can bring you the uh, max return. Yeah, so this is how the system works. Okay, so the first question uh, for the Darwinia CMO pre is what do you think about the Darwinia role in the Polkadot ecosystem? I would say we are striving to become a common good parachain of Polkadot ecosystem. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that Polkadot implements cross-chain message passing and shared protected runtime execution in place to afford parachains within the Polkadot system the interoperability. Uh, like say we're all speaking the same languages, so we don't have much problem communicating with each other. But for those heterogeneous blockchains outside of Polkadot ecosystem, it's like we're all speaking the foreign languages. So it poses like great challenges for us to communicate and pass messages or like transfer assets to each other. So uh, with our Darwinia bridge chain, with the first bridge from Darwinia to Ethereum, once the bridge get launched, uh, we can firstly empower those parachains within the Polkadot ecosystem to achieve like cross-chain interoperability so they don't have to worry about how to transfer assets across chains but just focus on their own business and their needs for like cross-chain so they just need to focus on their own business and their needs for cross-chain asset transfer or contacting other heterogeneous blockchains outside Polkadot ecosystem can be handled just by our Darwinia bridge chain. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think because that system is quite uh, special in the blockchain industry yeah, because uh, every project inside the uh, Polkadot is you know everybody uh, work together. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I think Polkadot ecosystem is quite strong because of you, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks uh, for a nice comments here. Yeah. So the next question for Bree that is why do you think cross chain is so important? Is what's the core value from your team? Yeah, exactly. Cross chain, like from a very difficult. A, like technical challenge for now it's kind of like a slogan you're hearing cross chain everywhere mm -hmm. so i've been thinking a, a very quite a long time to how to share our vision to build a, this kind of a cross chain token bridge to power the web3 future recently i watched a video of the idea behind the code polka dot and i saw this kind of a cap of parity and there's written a slogan called like less trust more truth and exactly this is something we would like to achieve in the future to build a trustless but connected future internet of token but cross chain is not a slogan so what people do care about is how to make a difference to real applications yeah. so in general for darwinia it's like achieve upgrade single chain applications to a cross chain version including but not limited to defi empty market stable coin and blockchain games for example for defi applications leveraging darwinian network we can help those single chain defi application like MakerDAO to achieve multi collaterals mm -hmm. um, integrating other like high quality assets from other heterogeneous blockchains but like say bring defi to more heterogeneous blockchains but not just ethereum Recently, the value of composability has shown greatly on Ethereum, right? Especially regarding yield farming. Yield yeah. farming is a really trending topic recently. Yeah. Actually, here do you know that you can also do yield farming across protocols or even cross chain? I don't know. For example, like say you can add liquidity to balancer using your tokens getting from Compound. Mm, okay. Amazing, right? Uh, unfortunately, we're facing like Ethereum gas fee is surging really harshly, right? Too much time. So I believe DeFi applications on other blockchains are actually growing very fast. So leveraging Darwinian network, we can achieve like cross-chain yield farming, uh, enhancing the cross-chain compatibility of DeFi applications. In this way, users can also have more fascinating choices to uh, explore more profit models in the future. It's kind of really interesting to me, yeah. And then stable coins are back on DeFi applications. Recently, we've been uh, working with MakerDAO and submitted our proposal to build a DAI token bridge for MakerDAO yeah. to cross-chain their DAI stable coin to the Polkadot ecosystem. And in the future, for our cross-chain blockchain game evolution land, every land is deployed on a different blockchain. In the future, if we're going to launch a new land implementing on the Polkadot chain, but also supporting stablecoin payment system so users can directly pay like stablecoin DAI to buy like some uh, game props in a blockchain game. Exactly, so blockchain games, our evolution land is going to be a showcase Darwinia heterogeneous cross-chain technology. I think um, Cosmos is also doing well on the uh, cross-chain, their, yeah. their IBC something. So uh, I also know uh, from Darwinia that we have already uh, build a bridge uh, between Darwinia and uh, Ethereum. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's a Darwinia. two-way bridge. Yeah, Darwinia to Ethereum and Ethereum, Ethereum to, to Darwinia. Darwinia. Uh, what's the thinking is bridge and uh, how's the affection of the transaction fee uh, for this? Thanks, Henry. That's a very nice question. So let me walk you through how the bridge works. Um, so first, I would like to clarify what is actually cross-chain asset transfer. For example, if you uh, need to uh, transfer your asset to a heterogeneous blockchain, you have to first lock your asset on your original chain. And then the targeting chain is going to like issue or mint the same amount of tokens. When you would like to redeem the tokens, these assets can be unlocked on the original chain and those map tokens on the target chain have to be burned. So actually to achieve cross-chain asset transfer, you have to solve three major challenges. The first challenge is who is going to verify the heterogeneous uh, cross-chain message or the transaction. So we definitely will get to see if we can like verify the message, the transaction in completely trustless way. 
So the second challenge is how to do the lock and unlock yeah. operations of your assets in a truly trustless way. Mm -hmm. so the third challenge is that the solution has to be economic feasible. Yeah, you have to completely run this bridge. It's not a temporary bridge, mm -hmm. right? Only solving the three major challenges can we truly cross stream assets in a completely decentralized way. And Darwinia has truly pioneered the cross stream heterogeneous solution in a completely trustless way as intermediate all of the middlemen. For example, the most previous cross stream bridge called Custodia model. The whole process, including the verification and operation of blocking and unlocking your assets, the whole process like can leave participation of the middleman so actually the solution brings much centralization risks. Our tech innovation is called Darwinia Relay. Uh, it upgrades the traditional like chain relay, also the light client solution. So Darwinia Relay can achieve no trust just verify. For example the traditional chain relay um, is actually uh, technical feasible but the relayer has to relay each and every block to the like kind of a data source, the light client. As I just mentioned, facing the harsh gas fee of Ethereum, relaying each and every block is not economically feasible because relayers, Darwinia Relay is a super light client protocol integrating some cutting edge crypto technology including MMR, Home Mountain Range, optimistic verification game to truly solve the three major cross-chain challenges. So we can achieve like sublinear performance, like say relay on demand, uh, not wasting every block. So in general, Darwinia is a heterogeneous cross-chain bridge protocol built on Substrate. We have one Web3 Foundation grant. Uh, we just joined Substrate Builder program and was selected to join Web3 Foundation Bootcamp. Darwinia is also a friend of Polkadot and Substrate in Polkadot to light the paper. We also have talked about our cross-chain solution to the research lead of Web3 Foundation. They all give us very positive comments, which gave us much confidence in the future developing. Well, yeah. Everybody are looking forward to for the, the launch of our Darwinia Ethereum bridge. Not, right? not only this, right? Not only Ethereum bridge, uh, we hope we can have more Darwinia and other blockchains bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, we also found another advantage of our Darwinia bridge is we support the crossing transfer of NFTs. Uh, it's not feasible for custodian models because the fee barrier is really high. For example, if you're going to transfer your Criminal Kitty, it's really hard to decide how much value is your Criminal Kitty, but custodian model or cross claim clever based solution, they all rely. Yeah, so this is also a great advantage and potential of our Darwinia bridge. So Darwinia is also planning to build our own cross chain NFT market in the future. Besides the potential integration of DeFi and NFT also uh, give us much imagination. For example, MakerDAO is way accepting real world assets as crypto uh, collateral. Darwinia not only offers a uh, real world assets tokenized service, we also would like to help like NFT market on a single chain like OpenSea to upgrade into a cross-chain version. We all know that everything about NFT market is heavily weighted to what's happening on Ethereum, but NFT is not just only on this one single chain, especially facing the really harsh gas fee now. So we believe that uh, NFT markets on other blockchains also have great potential uh, to tap in the future. Darwinian Bridge is going to help these single chain AFT market to upgrading to a cross-chain version.